You see, you're the only thing standing between Karen Reed and the tyranny of injustice. Probably a job you didn't want, but it's the greatest responsibility we have as citizens here in America. Probably a job you didn't want, but it's the greatest responsibility we have as citizens here in America. Preparing for today, I was reminded, quote, it's a quote about the truth. Quote, it's a quote about the truth. A quote, it's a quote about the truth. And those who permit themselves to tell a lie once find it much easier to do it a second time, and a third, and a third. This falsehood of the tongue leads to that of the heart, and in time, it depraves all its good dispositions. What does that mean? It means that it's been observed that to tell an untruth, to exaggerate, to make a false claim, it's a cancer. One lie begets another, and it's a malignancy that grows over time. And that, folks, is how a cover-up is born. That's how a Massachusetts state trooper says in whispered tones to his friends when he thought no one was looking or listening, oh. you don't have to wonder if they would lie to support their narrative. You need only wonder how many times they did lie. Over and over and over, they and others were caught deceiving big things, small things. It didn't really matter. They feared nothing. They'll look you in the eye, and deny phone calls. They'll deny secret meetings. They'll claim that calls are butt dials and butt dials are answered. They'll show you a video and tell you left is right and right is left. They'll magically turn three pieces of plastic into five right before your eyes. And even when they're caught with their own lies, they won't blink, they don't sweat. They'll just look you, look you in the eye and demand, pay no attention. You folks look the other way. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a cover-up in this case, plain and simple. You'll surely say to yourself, I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe that could happen in our community. But sadly, over the past eight weeks, you've seen it right before your eyes. So how does a cover-up happen? Well, let's count the ways, shall we? your eyes. So how does a cover-up happen? Well, let's count the ways, shall we? Sh sure. Hand pick your investigator. Make sure it's someone we know, someone on our side. Keep them close. Don't record interviews. Write vague and false police reports, omit witnesses' names, omit witnesses' interviews, altogether. high personal relationships, make this case cut and dry and ensure the homeowner, quote, never sees any shit because he's a Boston cop. But most important, pick your patsy. What does it look like when the government picks a narrative and then tries to form a prosecution around the narrative? It looks a lot like this. Because Karen was too kind, too nice, spoiled them too much, illustrated what anybody could imagine is a normal set of ups and downs for any couple. They, they talked it out, they communicated, they worked out their issues, and they had a nice, affectionate evening, evening out with their friends. And you don't have to take my word for it. 
pull the tape, as they say. Look at the video. What are the words that every single person who testified in this case used about Karen Reed and John O'Keefe that night? If an argument with a loved one is a motive for murder, folks, we're all in trouble. Speaking of which, what is the evidence that John went into the house? The Commonwealth will tell you, undoubtedly. No, he never went in the house. It shows that he took 80 steps and ascended or descended three flights of stairs at that time. And that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It matches. Walks into the house, goes directly to the basement. There's your 80 steps and your descending flights of stairs. The big problem for the Commonwealth is, was it outside at the car, ascending and descending stairs? Wouldn't climb it on top of the car. So they'll tell you, wait, 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 don't look at this, the Apple Health data, look at this other thing. Trooper Garino told you that Karen Reed's phone connected to John's Wi-Fi at what time? That they passed Karen's SUV as they drove away after talking to Julie. And Karen was alone in the SUV. John was not with her. He wasn't in the car. He wasn't standing outside the car. He wasn't sitting beside the car. He wasn't laying on the ground beside the car. He was nowhere in sight. There's only one other place that John could have been, and that's in the house. Exactly where the Apple Health data places him. So it all fits. Had to be in order to connect to the Wi Fi at 12:36. So unequivocally, Jennifer McCabe was lying about watching that SUV, and it makes you wonder why. And to add to that deceit, she was also blatantly lying about the calls to John. Let's talk for a second about what actually happened in the time leading up to everyone going to 34 Fairview. Brian Albert, Brian Higgins show up drunk at the waterfall. They've been drinking in the afternoon. But the odd things keep piling up, and here's another. Chloe was the Albert family pet. Not only did she appear to be gone from the house that morning, on January 29th, nobody saw her there. Even Jen McCabe admitted that I didn't see her there. <coughs> but they actually got rid of the dog altogether. Also a dog who had a bite history. Why was it so important to get rid of that dog? Was there something about the dog they did not want law enforcement to find out? Recall what Dr. Russell said. She's seen up to a thousand animal attacks. After a night of drinking and hanging out and partying, after being together for the entire day at 2.22 a.m., Brian Albert decides to call Brian Higgins. That call was missed. 17 seconds later, Higgins calls Brian back, and they speak for 22 seconds. And just in and of itself, the fact that the call was made. But what's even more incriminating is they both claim astonishingly that those calls are the butt dials. Brian Higgins. It's Brian, last name Albert. How deep was that plow? It was dark. Whiskey thing was three to four. At least a couple. Fooling around, fooling around. The TV was on. I remember the phone being on the bed. I threw the phone away. And my phone was upgraded. Do I know how to get rid of information? I mean, I think there's different ways that you can possibly can wipe your phone. My best friend. He's a coworker of mine. He has a level of expertise more than myself. He wipe your phone. Correct that it becomes a brick. If, if I did take the SIM card out, I would have. I had every right to do that. Objection. Sustained. 